there is always talk about immigration reform in both Canada and the United States and UK and pretty much everywhere. I don't even know what they mean by immigration reform when they say they have to have it. Other than for me, I would think that means no more two-year waiting lists for asylum seeker. What does that look like? And do you think it would happen anytime soon? I guess there has to be a will first, right? That's such a great question, Debbie, because I think your viewers are all around the world in Canada. I think America often for some seems like a shiny object because they are in much worse situations. In fact, this morning I read an article in The Guardian about the new prime minister and some Brits feeling that I'm so glad I'm in the US. There are good things and bad things, but to take just immigration reform, why is that important? Just a very quick overview. In the 1950s, we had our immigration laws overhauled. We had some immigration from 1920s where it was all about quotas. Let's not have this group and that group. There was a lot of challenges because of the war that we needed people here. There were, of course, refugees similar to what's happening now that needed to be brought here. So on the heels of those issues, as well as the civil rights movement, immigration reform was successful in the 50s. And at that time, it was really about... Um, family unity. It was about making sure that people could be together, families could be together. It wasn't necessarily about the economy as much, not about the skills. In 1960s, there were some reforms and 1990s is where we got our current categories, but that's it. In 2001, we had some changes when DHS, you know, the Immigration Nationality, uh, the INA or INS became DHS. There were some changes through President Clinton in 1996 that were enforcement related. But the bulk and the root of the laws that we have are from the 50s and the 90s. That hasn't changed. But if you think about the world now, we mm. have globalized. We are smaller in our communication. We are remote working. The pandemic has shown us how small the world can really be. The laws have not kept up with it. Mm. So when you hear the word immigration reform, it's to reform all of these buckets, not just one. And the trouble with trying to reform just one of these buckets means that all of these other buckets will be even more lopsided. And the way mm. I describe it to my clients is that the ankle bone is connected to the knee bone that's connected to the hip bone. If you want to fix one of these bones, you're going to have a different lopsided body if you don't fix all of it. And immigration reform has been necessary for so many years, but the pandemic really exposes the need for reform. Whether mm -hmm. you are a small business trying to serve your customers, let's call it a small restaurant, or you are a nursing home, or you're a hospital, or you are Microsoft trying to serve the world with your software, there are so many vacancies in this country with jobs that are necessary. We cannot fill them. No. And we do not actually have a low skilled visa category. So every day I'm speaking to small business owners. Just yesterday I spoke to a person who runs a construction company. The day before I was speaking to a restaurant owner who is in a authentic cuisine and he can't find workers. He can't find servers anyway, but he can't find the chefs he needs. Reform is necessary for educational reasons, for health reasons, for the economy in general. And what I love about Canada and of course, I'm not a resident there, so I don't know every in and out, but at least from this side of the border, it feels as though you guys understand the economic value of immigrants coming in. We have similar political attitudes on the one side of the fence that hamstring these things provincially. But yes, overall, we are very welcoming. 